Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Friday night. End of the work week. Weekend is upon us. It is uh, June 16, 2023, about 1037 here along the West Coast in the PM here in California. The latest activity shows a 1.8 into the Hawaii area. Uh, a little bit of uptick taking place here within the last couple hours, including some movement here just off the coast of Panama with a 5.3 coming in. Uh, that follows a 4.1 that uh, hit up along the plate boundary earlier uh, this morning. So things kind of kicking up there across this area, as you can see on the globe as well. As far as the states go, let's go ahead and check this out. Got a 2.5 over here around the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, 2.5. Pembroke, Virginia. Looks like at about 1.5 kilometers deep. Very shallow earthquake. Movement out around Texas, outside of the uh, Guadalupe Peak area, Pecos, Texas region, west of Odessa. And a little bit of movement up here into Oklahoma, outside of the El Reno area as well. Uh, Yellowstone, getting a little spotty movement up here. Most of this activity though from earlier uh, this morning. Let's check out the Yellowstone graphs here real quick and see what we have for the uh, data. And here was the swarm. This kind of looks like the swarm that was kicking off earlier this morning. Quite a few earthquakes in there. Very small. Uh, and the majority of those did not show up uh, on too many other stations here across the, uh, the network. So that tells me right there they're very small microquakes. Uh, but for the most part, uh, an earthquake here and there around Yellowstone. Nothing big. Just uh, some very small microquakes. Up into the Washington area. Um, not a whole lot going on. Some explosions, but uh, those look like maybe uh, some uh, quarry blasts going on out there. Uh, outside of the Mount Vernon region, aside from that, very small microquake activity across the rest of the state. Do have an earthquake here into the uh, northern California area, 2.2 into the mountain range here. Uh, a little bit of activity earlier uh, this morning as well, just off the coast here of Eureka. That uh, associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. On that note, let's check out the uh, Trimmer map. Only 10 epicenters here of Trimmer. There underneath the uh, coast of Oregon, down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Further down south here, a little bit of movement across the Concord area, 2.0, coming in earlier this uh, afternoon. And uh, for the most part, down south here in the Southern California, Things a little spotty, nothing major going on. California has been awfully quiet here in terms of earthquake movement recently. Uh, most of the activity here across Pahala on the Big Island. Uh, I don't think we see any major changes there at the Kilauea Volcano. Still continuing to erupt. As um, I'm sure it will be expected to continue like that for who knows, months at a time. Uh, let's see, what do we got here for Alaska? Latest activity, looks like a couple smaller microquakes around the Alaska region. Did see some further movement up north here. Uh, but for the most part, that was from earlier uh, this morning. A 3.7 coming in along the Aleutian Trench. Over here around the Crow Kamchaka and the Japan Trench. Noticing a little uptick here tonight around the Japan area. Uh, as listed up here on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe, you can see this active... Um, activity fairly active uh, tonight and throughout the day today did see a 5.6 earlier this evening 49 kilometers deep with the most recent activity here upstream closer to the surface with a 4.9 so a little bit of bouncing back and forth here along this entire trench zone uh, continue to watch that also an activity a little earthquake here around the Kuro Islands a 4.8 that along the Kuro Kamchaka Trench and um, this earthquake right here, pretty deep. Well into the Izu Trench here, 4.1, 400 kilometers deep here. So we'll watch uh, potentially for some surface, uh, surface movement here uh, in the hours and days ahead. Uh, some activity across the southern end here of the Java Trench, mostly uh, threes, but looks like a couple fours in here across this area. The latest one shows a 4.4, but uh, looks kind of looks like there's been some newer movement here to the west of where the USGS is reporting here along the Java Trench with that 4.7 and a 3.7 uh, earlier this evening. Uh, Tonga area, goodness, this has been rocking and rolling like crazy. I did mention that we uh, 
the six pointer came in bef- after my update uh, this morning. I was doing an update and I said, "Watch for some further uh, potentially larger movement, maybe up to another six or so." And sure enough, about an hour or so later, that six pointer came in. And the reason why is because we're seeing a lot of this deeper movement uh, triggering some stress up here. Been watching this bounce back and forth with some deeper movement here. Uh, this is going to be the deep earthquakes. Uh, let's see here. 35 kilometers deep. Let's see. I think we had some more. Where'd they go? Let me add those onto the map here. Because um, they've been recent. It's just been past the 24 hour period. So here's a deeper movement quakes. That 7.2 yesterday uh, is triggering the sh- the uh, shallower earthquake activity upstream. There we go. So deeper movement here. Shallow earthquake activity being triggered up here with that 6.2 just literally due east of the seven pointer that struck yesterday downstream though remember the seven pointer 167 kilometers deep all this activity uh very shallow deeper movement all over here uh and it's uh you know i still have a little concern here for the new zealand area being along that plate boundary uh nothing showing up here across the map for new zealand so let's go ahead and double check see what we have here from the geonet servers about four hours ago a 2.6 uh, and that's going to be the week and above. Don't need to really check all the microquakes out here. Not really seeing any major movement on the earthquake drums here across New Zealand. So things are just, you know, calm. Just don't get too complacent because I believe we will see some activity uh, taking place down there along that plate boundary. Uh, but here, goodness, that's just a lot of activity kicking up. Uh, I'm trying to think here if we've seen any major movement here as far as larger scale activity goes let me see well that's kind of hard to say <laughs> i was looking at the uh oh the last oh, how far did i go back back to about 1990 or so it seems like yesterday but that, that was actually a long time ago goodness 33 years ago is that right oh man scary uh but i was looking at earthquake activity 6.0 and above uh, you can see today's activity and yesterday's seven pointer. They do get some big ones out here. Um, back in 2009, right along the trench area, the, the Tonga Trench uh, was at 7.6. And specifically around this area that we're watching, they see quite a few sixes out here. I guess we're overdue, right? Because there's just been a little bit of activity here since about 1998, 2004. Uh, so it's a, little, a matter of time before we see some further movement there. Uh, but again, um, eight pointer, hard to say if we built up enough strain here for a, you know, for a, a much larger quake, it's possible. Just have to keep an eye on this area. It is a uh, major producer of some large earthquakes out here. Uh, so keep an eye on that region. Let's see here further west. Um, out here around Tajikistan or Tajikistan, take your pick. Seen a little bit of activity. Looks like some fours kicking off there in the last 24 hours. Getting some movement down here into the Gulf of Eden as well. Eden with that 4.7. That area has seen a swarm here recently, but uh, it's been dying off. But occasionally we get a, a four or five pointer there, uh, letting us know that it's still very active. Mostly twos and threes across the Mediterranean. Over here in France, they're rocking and rolling with some uh, rare earthquake activity. There in France with the 4.8 this morning. It looks like they've had a 4.4 earlier this afternoon as well. USGS is reporting on that earthquake, uh, although they downgraded it to 3.9. But I'm really surprised they're even showing it here on the map. Uh, it just seems like once in a while they'll feel like putting an international earthquake there on the map uh, under the 4.0 threshold. But I, I kind of wish they'd have an option here to include. You know, at least the all mag, or maybe maybe 2.5 worldwide at least. That way we can see where some of the smaller earthquake activity is occurring. Um, it just it's kind of neat to see, right? Kind of uh, get to see some of the smaller quakes out there besides four pointers. But uh, definitely seen some activity around France here today. Uh, continue to watch that. I know we did a little search of that last night, and. Um, they don't see too much earthquake activity over here. 
Uh, right now, this is shown 6.0 and above since 1990. Of course, no six-pointers. I think the largest they had within this area was about a five-pointer. So I don't think it can get much larger around here, but you never know. Atlantic Ocean, clear, calm, quiet conditions. Continue to watch this and see how, uh, see how the weekend develops. Space weather activity. I'm hoping for something to pick up here from some of these new sunspots that have been knocking on the door here. We are looking at a pretty large sunspot region, almost Earth-facing, but it is here on the visible disk. Uh, this regional sunspot up here in the northeastern quadrant of the sun looks like it's dying down. Um, but we'll continue to watch this little core here, maybe for some further strengthening. Looks like a couple new sunspots here far out there on the eastern limb of the sun. Uh, but for now, we'll keep an eye on this region. And it looks like maybe this sunspot area here that's currently facing Earth is getting a little bit more complex. It's been going through a little phase of, of uh, quietness and then unstable conditions. The UV filter ray here, let me go over to that and see what we have. Of course, we're looking for brightness, which would indicate flaring, uh, mostly from the sunspot down here. Uh, and then also on the eastern limb, we'll have to keep an eye on those new ones that uh, are coming around the bend. For now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 30, X flare around 5% chance. And no surprise storms tonight. That was due to a, uh, well, a corona hole, but also some, uh, oh, well, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, but they occur occasionally between weak solar wind and strong solar wind. Uh, it just happens to stir up little areas, uh, little vortices, I guess you could say, in the solar wind that uh, kind of hit us last night with a G, um, G2 class storm. Not expecting that, though. Uh, tonight, never know, though. Sun's been uh, giving out some uh, interesting, interesting activity here recently. All right, so yeah, we'll just continue to watch this. Uh, Storm Prediction Center here. Not a whole lot going on here for tomorrow. Um, I guess we do have a fairly wide area of enhanced risk. Not a whole lot of tornado potential. This is going to be some wind and hail events around a good portion of Oklahoma. I think, I think that covers just almost the entire state here of Oklahoma. Uh, for enhanced so tomorrow's a uh, day to you know if you're home from work definitely keep that car or truck or whatever you drive in the carport or under a carport or in the garage is probably better could be seeing some large damaging hail uh, at least two inch diameter or larger so yeah just a heads up uh, let's see out here along the west coast we got uh, we got some more heat tomorrow before things relatively cool down uh, pretty nicely. Here's the temp anomalies. Uh, right now we're still cooking out here. This is for today and tomorrow, but this kind of gives you a general indication of where the cooler weather is. Anom anomalies based on the climatology uh, from these range uh, from this date range here. But uh, you can see West Coast, watch this low pressure system come in. Boom, right there, dropping down a lot of cool weather here for the West Coast. We're talking about highs in the mid-70s. It's almost like springtime, March. Uh, so it'll be a nice little break from the 100 degree temperatures that we had today. But that's going to be on Monday, also into Tuesday. Uh, but you can see a lot of heat here being pushed up well into the northern plains due to this trough uh, of low pressure here it's just the jet streams kind of funneling up this warmer air from texas all the way up into the areas in canada goodness and that's going to stick around again until tuesday it looks like seeing what else we have looks like just even on uh for the most part it looks like all week we're going to be below normal temperatures out here along the west coast and that is good news. I like it. And as we head into the following week, well, 
not seeing any major ridging setting up out here along the west coast. Texas, though, is going to cook. Look at that. Of course, Texas is always hot, but um, goodness, look at Oklahoma right about there, July 1st time frame. That's going to be a hot one. A lot of warmer uh, environments kicking up out there. It is summertime, I get it, but uh, these are anomalies here that uh, show possible, you know, record-breaking temperatures for that time frame. So continue to watch that. These are just little trends. Uh, far as any hurricane possibility goes, uh, let's head out to the Western Atlantic. At least that's what they call it out here. Shows a good portion of the Gulf of Mexico as well. Check out, see if we can find any tropical development. Um, looks like that one was trying here. Bringing some rain into Florida and the East Coast where they need it. Got a hurricane way out here in the Atlantic, but that is going to get caught up in the, uh, the wind patterns out there and get shifted away from the states. Um, I really don't see anything major entering into the Gulf of Mexico here as we head into July. So just kind of see how that goes, right? Alrighty, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a great night. Um, stay safe out there. And uh, enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow morning. Have a good night.